And he came in with Paige, and Ron Babette was doing something for Jane Velez Mitchell, and we just kind of hit it off, and, and something about him. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> something about him. And then we, weren't, we, we didn't work together that day, but we talked a little bit after that, and somehow he finagled his way, and I'm just joking. <laughs> Now anyway, so his name is Marlon Rison. He goes by Plant Based G, and we call him the Transformer because he'll transform your body and like, bam, boom. Everybody put your hands together for Marlon Rison. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone's stomach feeling after that food from the lovely chef, Bad Bet? Right, well, first thing I got to speak of is first, Charles, um, yes. your speech brother was, yes. was incredible. Yes. And all I could think about while he was speaking was, do I do everything with the same amount of passion that he spoke with? Mm -hmm. You know, I think all of us should ask ourselves, do we do things with the same amount of passion that he spoke with? And just to give you a little bit of background about me, you know, as far as transforming and as far as change goes, mine all started with food. You know, everything started with food with me, and it started about 18 months ago. And it wasn't a planned thing. You know, I was sitting down one afternoon, like we typically do, relaxing, turned on Netflix, and I said, ah, you know, what do I want to watch today? So first thing that came up was What the Health. So What the Health came up, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. I got halfway through What the Health, turned to look at a friend of mine, and I said, do you realize our lives just changed? And, and, and immediately, and it wasn't one of those things, people will ask me, they'll say, so did it take you long to change? Did it take you long to adjust? No, immediately I knew my life had changed. And it had changed for a number of reasons. One, because of the health side of it. You know, all of the things that were pointed out in What the Health, as far as the things that are killing African Americans specifically, the things that are killing people of color specifically, that was one thing that came into mind immediately for me. And, I don't know if you all can tell. I know I look fairly young, but I'm 45, and I'm trying to hold on to it. And so that was something that immediately made me say, you know, I need to change the way that I do things. So it was the health side of it. But then also I looked at how people of color were being treated in certain areas. If you look at the pig farms in North Carolina and Virginia, if you look at the fact that, you know, in impoverished areas, in urban areas, there's the promotion of dairy products when they know good and well. These things are hurting you know, our community. You know, that made me say, I've got to do something different. You know, it was time for me to transform. And typically, it takes something big for us to make that change. So that's what it was for me. And most of you haven't seen pictures of me on Instagram or whatnot. But can you believe that I used to weigh almost 400 pounds? Whoa. Yeah, exactly. And this wasn't that long ago. I used to weigh 380 pounds. Whoa. And it was intentional. That's the crazy part of it. I used to work in the sports and supplement industry. I could bench press 500 pounds. I could squat 600 pounds. I could deadlift 600 pounds. You couldn't tell me anything as far as food went. You know, I ate protein all the time, ate steaks, chicken, fish. I was misled. But one time I talked to my doctor and he said, here's something that you need to remember. No matter how much you work out, no matter what you do, your heart is still having to pump that 380 pounds. Mm. So with that, that made me pause. He said, if you plan on seeing your kids' kids, you need to make a change. Mm. And so I did. Here's the great thing about the change that I made. Most people talk about the weight loss, and the weight loss is important. But there's some other things that were even more important than that. I used to deal with um, acid reflux, high blood pressure. My acid reflux left within two weeks of me changing my diet. High blood pressure left within one month of me changing my diet. And those things are extremely important. The weight loss was extremely important, but there are things that are even bigger than that that I wasn't expecting as far as how I changed as a man. You know, overall, I started looking at things different. And with the help of Paige and some other people, I started looking at the way animals were treated and how that made me look at things different. I started looking at what animals went through as far as the anxiety, the depression, all of the things that they have to go to. And I said, okay, wait a minute. Let me ask myself a question. Would I want to hang out with people who were anxious all the time, who were depressed, who were going through a lot of emotional situations? I said, of course not. I wouldn't want to put myself in a situation to be around people like that. Yet, we have people who choose to ingest products who have these same things. Now, I'm, big in the, in the, I'm a big believer in the transfer of energy. So why would I want to consume something that has nothing but anxiety, depression, and death when I can consume life? I mean, think about it. It's much easier to consume life 
and live life the way you want to, it, it's a very simple choice that you have to make. Why, why would you consume that? Another thing I looked at too was when you look at Thanksgiving, when you look at birthday parties, when you look at other celebrations, why is it that we get out a barbecue pit and consume death mm -hmm. when we're celebrating life? Especially when you're talking about birthday parties and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it makes no sense if I'm trying to further myself to consume something that I know is going to move me backwards. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a conscious effort to consume life to move my life forward. And as far as transformation goes, for me, there were a lot of things that took place, everything from the way that I looked at food, everything from the way that I looked at life, everything from how I looked at compassion as far as animals, as far as my people go. And it's funny because I told a few friends of mine, I said, it's interesting in that not only have I became a better person, but I've actually became a better lover. And they were like, wait a minute, better lover? I was like, well, I, I guess kind of, because my arteries are clear, but at the same time, so I'll let you marinate on that. I know Chef Babette was, I know Chef Babette was, was, was kind of treading along those lines earlier, but it's, a, it's, it, it's an important thing to look at when we talk about our lives, when we talk about getting the most out of our lives, when we talk about living with passion, when we talk about doing things with passion. In fact, I talked to Charles earlier, and one thing that I've learned to do through my transformation is to appreciate every day from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. So whenever I wake up, the first thing that I do when I wake up is I stand up, I get out of bed, and I say, thank you, God, thank you, universe. And I open up my arms wide and I do that. And I tell people I walk through my life now with my arms wide open, embracing everything that comes my way because I look at things different. Just the fact that I don't consume what I used to consume as far as death, as far as destruction goes, I love better. I care more. I find myself to be a more emotional individual because I've opened myself up more. And especially as far as men go, we need to do this more so. That's right. We need to be open to our feelings. We need to be open to looking at things differently. And I think overall as, as a group, especially when we're speaking about minorities, we have to get out of the same habits that have led us down the road of destruction when you talk about health. You know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, my grandmother, you know, she had cancer, or my father, he had diabetes, therefore I'm going to get it. No, the only way you're going to get it is if you have those same habits. We can change that. We've got the opportunity to change that, but we've got to put it in our court. We've got to take full responsibility, full responsibility for it. We've got to take full ownership for it. You know, the one thing that I try to convey to people, and I'll leave you guys with this so we can get on to the party side of it is, eat as if you love yourself. Yeah. Move as if you love yourself. Yeah. Speak as if you love yourself. Act as if you love yeah. yourself. If you do those things, life will be great. Woo. Eat as if you love yourself. That means everything you put in front of you should have life. Mm -hmm. Speak as if you love yourself. That means everything that you say should be positive. Mm -hmm. Everything you should say should be forward moving. Act as if you love yourself. Everything that you do, from the nonverbal gestures to the verbal gestures, everything should be about life. Everything should be about forward movement. If you do that, we'll, each one of us will get exactly where we need to go, but we've got to make a conscious effort to move forward. A conscious effort to move forward. And for me, it started with how I am. That's pretty much it for me. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Charles, come up and chef Lovett really quickly before we get to some grooving and moving. And um, just if you guys have any questions you'd like to ask any of them, because I know it only takes one person to ask a question, so we're going to stand here for a few minutes so somebody raise their hand, and after they raise their hand, and 19 other people going to raise their hand. So does anybody want to start off the questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, in particular, uh, Chef Lovett and brother, um, as far as... Which brother? Marlon. Marlon. Mm -hmm. Apologies. That's okay. um, I dance professionally, right? And when I went vegan, I lost a lot of stamina. Okay. I see you guys are fit, and I'm just wondering, is there anything particular that you guys consume to feed that energy? Let me go first. Um, as far as I go, what I try to consume is heavy on the greens. Uh, I'm heavy as far as broccoli goes. I'm heavy as far as asparagus goes. I'm also heavy on raw foods, too. So when it comes to raw smoothies, um, I do raw smoothies every morning. That's the first thing I wake up with. So I start off every morning with a raw smoothie. Um, it's got cashew-based milk, uh, bananas, avocados, uh, beets, carrots, 
um, a hemp-based protein, and then also I'll throw in strawberries, blueberries, maybe throw in some blackberries too. But that's the way I start each, that's the way I start every, you'll be fine. The key is having enough nutrients, so I stick to the greens as far as that goes. And for myself, I make every meal count, pretty much. Except for y'all, let me tell you what I did. Do I have to talk on this? Yeah, because we're having one. Y'all can't. Who said this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so so check this out. I, I, I often do these little tests on myself. Normally, I'm like you. I love to start the day off with life, and you know that, it's a guy. I'm not big on sitting down to huge plates of food. I, I try to make each meal count. Every I, I can a meal can be mangoes for me, or a meal can just be seeds or nuts, and that's a meal. Each meal needs to count because you don't need to just sit down with these three big giant plates of food. It's just too much food. It's just ridiculous. But I decided. I had so much snot coming out of my nose. I didn't even know where it was all coming from. And that's what you have to do. You have to pay attention to your body. You have to pay attention to what you're putting in, no matter whether it's food or negativity. No matter what it is, you gotta pay attention to what you're putting in your system. And I've decided, because of that, I was miserable. And yeah, I, I, I cleaned it up with herbs and all that, but y'all know herbs is slow. When it, you know, I could have run over to CVS and got me some chemicals, <laughs> shut it down real quick. But I wouldn't have been cleaning it out. And I don't like to call it a cold. I'm not sick. I'm cleansing. The body is doing and behaving the way that it's supposed to. So when y'all running around here, mm, the weather changed. I got a cold because it rained. No, you didn't. You got a cold because your body is like a trash compactor. It fills up with too much mucus and then it's gonna expel it. And then your throat shuts down so you can stop eating because you ain't got sense enough to do that. And then you get a fever, burning stuff off. Now this is just, I, I ain't no doctor, I just made all this up. It just makes sense to me. Anyway, so basically, Sagai, great question. Life, I'm with him, it's consuming life. Life begets life. And then Rondo comes to me every morning, he's like, you ain't made me no juice. <laughs> you know I need my juice. <laughs> and so he's right. We need to have something life live in our system every single day. Do that for yourself. You'll be healthier and happier, and you'll have a lot more energy, because trust, man, I use up a lot of energy. <laughs> anyway, Any anyway. other questions? In, what, you want to? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. I would like to comment yes, on please. that. You uh, want to come on. Yeah, I would like to just add something. And before something you say anything, this was your water. I just want you to oh, take a sip of it, please. Thank you. Just, thank you. you kept no. making me lick my, li lick my lips with <laughs> you. I wanted to drink something real bad. I'm just so glad you drank that. It's <laughs> <laughs> my little love. You know what you call that? Mm. It's something, something I got, but I wanted you to drink that. Go on now. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to make a comment to you. You know, I think it all starts with uh, mindset. I. Uh, got off beef maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I'm, I'm really, really moving. We're really moving into this vegan lifestyle or, or plant-based lifestyle. But what I want to share with you is this, and I want everybody to pay close attention to this. I was talking to a guy. He actually designed, helped design one of the uh, Android phones. He was in federal prison. And he was just showing me that most of society only uses a cell phone for 30 percent of what it really could do like your your cell phone can do way more than what you know how to do well i want you to look at your body the same way see so you have to get out of your mind that you're a human being you're not you're a spirit having a human experience so your flesh is like an earth suit and we don't understand the earth suit just like you don't understand 70 percent of your cell phone you got to go take it back because you don't get it well when you start eating right your energy your frequency your vibration in life changes and sometimes there's going to be an adjustment you're going to think well, man my energy is not there but you got to make your body do what you want it to do because you're the spirit 
And if you push through it and you add these nutrients, you get this advice from them and you push through it, your body is going to adapt to your mind. Not, man, I'm not having no energy, so I'm about to stop this. No, you're going to comply with what my mind say you should do. Change your mind and what? Change your mind and what? Any other questions out there? Come on, y'all. Somebody want to ask that. I wish I really wanted to ask that. Yes? Yeah, come on. Yeah, um, the fitness level, um, the brother who weighed yes, sir. something now, mm -hmm. what's your fitness regime now, and has it changed or has it increased? And that's the first question. The second question is to go back. What's your fitness regime at 68 years old, and how has it changed throughout the years? Uh, as far as I go, fitness is next level. I'll give you an example. Uh, I've never been a runner my whole life. You know, I was weighing 340, 350. Heck, I, in fact, when I was in the fourth grade, I weighed 150 pounds. Wow. Just to get, well, you know what? Let me, let me back up. Yeah, I was a big boy. And, and as far as just determination goes, when I was in high school, I lost 100 pounds then on the Weight Watchers diet. So I've lost 100 pounds twice. So you know what I tell people is, it's all mental. Please don't tell me you can't do it. I did it as a teenager, just because I wanted to. It was strictly because I wanted to. But as far as energy levels go, I'm 45. I'm getting ready to do my first marathon next Saturday. Wow. Would have never considered doing a marathon at any point in my life for no reason. But my, my mindset changed. And Charles spoke to it just a minute ago. I know when the brother was asking as far as energy levels go. I don't allow anything to enter my brain mm. that says I'm not next level. Mm. Mm. No one can tell me I'm not next level. No one can tell me that. You know, and I've proven that. You know, number one, by changing my habits, which was the hardest thing to do. Changing your eating habits, that's the hardest thing you can do. Because I eat more than I do anything else on a daily basis. <laughs> so as far as I go, that was the hardest thing for me to do. But in terms of how I'm able to perform as far as working out, I get on the Stairmaster, and for anyone who gets on the Stairmaster, you know that you've got 20 levels you can go up to. On it. I'll work out on level 20, I'll do maybe five to 15 one minute sprints every day. I don't know any young people who can do that. I've got a 24 year old son who played college football and he can't do that. You know, and he'll look at me and he'll say, Dad, you're different. I said, yeah, because my diet is different. You know what I mean? And my diet being different also allowed my mindset to be different. Oh, no. So with that, like I said, I truly feel like I'm untouchable. When I walk in the gym, they get that vibe from me. Like, dude's about to come in here and handle business. <laughs> you know what I mean? But a lot of it comes from the mindset, and it comes from the food that I put in my system. So when you combine those things, you're invincible. You're truly invincible. Do not accept anything else. It's just like, I'll tell you as far as Tara goes. She said, she was like, she came to me with a little bit of an issue. She said, hey, I'm trying to get the lower half going a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get my legs, my glutes, all of that to grow. And I said, okay. I said, well, we can come up with something. She said, well, I tried to do different things here and there, and this kind of worked, and this didn't work. I said, well, look, let me tell you my approach. My approach is to force that issue, period. We're going to force the issue. And so she was kind of like, well, how was that? And I said, well, I said, we'll probably start off with trying to do about 500 reps a day as far as squats go. And I know she was kind of like, whoa. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to force that issue. I've done 1,000 reps on a squat, squat rack, leg press. And the thing about it is, does it hurt? Obviously it hurts, but I still want to force that issue. Force that issue. It's a mindset. It's absolutely a mindset. And, and for myself, um, I actually didn't really start working out until I met Ron Davis. Um, my very first date with him, he took me to Griffith Park. I thought this man had lost his Come on mind. Now. He ran the whole, he, have you guys been to Griffith Park? You start at the bottom and you go all the way past the observatory to the, he ran it backwards. <laughs> and I kept saying to him, when, when are you gonna stop? When are we gonna stop hitting these heels? He's like, just another. That's another one around the corner there. And we just kept it was heel after heel after heel. And I thought to myself, that was the day that I challenged myself. I thought, if this guy can run this entire thing backwards, I'm gonna be able one day 
to, maybe in, at a walker's pace, but in a running mode, I'm gonna be able to run this whole hill. And I don't care when I get, go up to Griffith Park, I don't care how long I've stayed away from Griffith Park, I can get myself in, in, at a walker's pace in a running mode and I can run that hill. So I had to move. I, I don't really have a choice. Um, I understand the, the importance of a good core. Mm. I, I get it. And I am not going to be 80 years old getting down and got to call life alert to get back up. <laughs> so that's it and that's all that motivates me. I want to go down and get back up. <laughs> Any other questions, anyone? Uh, yes, Vanessa? Uh, Charles? Um, so when Charles. you were in prison and you were you initially got there, what got you to change your mindset to make the most out of that experience and to turn it into a positive situation? You know, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no other thing that drove me to change than seeing people in need. So for me, when I, when I graduated from high school, I was graduated uh, best personality, most friendliest senior. So I always had this, this care for people. But when I got in prison and I watched guys hang themselves, I'm talking about guys I would talk to today would go hang themselves because they had three years in prison. And I watched these guys was getting on these, what we call them as hot meds, when psychologically they couldn't take the experience and these people would dope all these prisoners up on medication. Well, the problem with that is when they come back home to their family, they're no more good. They're not even in the right state of mind. So when I saw that, I remember the thing that triggered me, the very first thing that triggered me. I was in the medium high, and uh, I still was you know, bringing weed into the joint and all that stuff. There was a guy 60-something years old, and he came to me and said, Charles, can you read this for me? So I read it, and he would do that every day. So I said, sir, you don't know how to read? He, he said, no. I said, man, you ever thought about getting a GED? He said, man, I'm 60-something years old. I said, who says that makes a difference? Mm -hmm. So I helped him to get his GED. And I was just talking to Martin about this, and this is so powerful. Uh, whatever you do to and for others, you're actually doing for yourself. Mm -hmm. So as I was reaching out to help people read and get their GED, I was actually transforming myself and had no idea what I was doing until that momentum had ran away with me. And Charles Dunn was transforming while helping other people. Changing the road. Changing experience. the road. Changing That's your right. road, guys. Anyway, since we Starting have no more questions, I want to give Parsons all my people a round of applause. Woo! Aren't they awesome? Thank you, Ron and Steph I E for the wonderful allowing us to use the space. Um, thank you, Chef Babette, for the food. And, and I think you're going to bring out some more desserts because otherwise, yeah, y'all yeah, can. Be. And for those who want to stay and get your shake on and dance a little bit, come on. We put some chairs back. We got our DJ EZ slash Chris. Why am I sounding like that? <laughs> we got the DJ here. He's going to pull with us with a little music. And um, no, but thank you all for coming and thank you for joining and thank you for supporting. And. Um, we got a couple of great things coming up, so stay on your page, huh? Book signing over at the table, and then Bebet's going to come and chat and take some pictures with our VIPs after we... Hi, you guys are... Hi. Oh, that's Brian. Hi, Brian. And who are you guys? Oscar and Who the our mighty and Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Are you guys just getting here? Yeah. Okay, well, thank Welcome. you for coming to the end. But there's food. But there's still food. There's Go get food. some food. They came to dance. Um, anyway, thank you all for coming. Um, but that's going to go sign. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. Hey, guys, remember, this, is, this was not about becoming vegan, per se. It's really about hopefully enlightening you to try something different. And if you're having any health issues, you know, there's, there's another gentleman just really short. 
who is supposed to join us on the road. His name is D. Anthony. He has terminal cancer, like he'll never not have cancer. Never, ever. I saw a video of this dude. He changed his diet, which is why he's still living, because he's supposed to have been dead a long time ago. He completely changed his diet, went plant-based. He was upside down on this thing, doing crunches with his legs in the air, bringing his legs to, I just, I just, uh, yeah, it was some off the chart thing. And I said, is that you? He said, yep, that's me. Terminal cancer. So, you know, and, and he changed, he had to change his mindset, he had to change his diet, he had to do a whole lot of changing. But people are living with things when they make the decision that life is more important. Yeah, come on, my sister. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I just met this.